For the majority of its history, Scotland has been known for its eclectic mix of folklore and fantasy. From the Doinishi or fairies, to the great warriors of old, magic has always been alive and well in the country. Of those that practice the old arts of spells and rituals, many use this power to aid their fellow man. They would create medicines, charms, that warded off dark spirits. But there were some who would harness this arcane knowledge for their own selfish reasons. They would make pacts with demons or evil entities, and want nothing more than the destruction and desecration of mankind. Donald Mackay, The Wizard of Ray. Ray is a small town, found in the far north of Scotland, in the county of Caithness. For a very long time indeed, Ray had been under the control of the clan Mackay. The title Lord Ray was created in 1628 for the soldier Sir Donald Mackay, 14th chief of the clan Mackay and first lord of Ray. This Scottish noble received the title for service to the King of Denmark during the Thirty Years' War. Since that time, the title of Lord Ray has always been granted to the clan chief of the Mackays. However, this Donald Mackay is not the one I want to talk about today. It is his namesake, his great-great-grandchild, Donald Mackay, the Fourth Lord of Ray. The Fourth Lord of Ray was born sometime in the 18th century and quickly grew to become a wise and commanding adolescent. He was first educated at home in Scotland, where he would show great promise. Eventually, young Donald was sent to the continent to be educated in the art of war. At the time, there was a strong holding of Dutch Mackays in Holland. This side of the family had remained in the continent after the Thirty Years' War. Donald would stay with his relatives, many of whom were officers in the Dutch army. Here he would learn valuable military skills and increase his ever-growing knowledge of humanity. The young man absorbed all the information he could, and within a few years he became determined to travel Europe. He had taken an interest in the workings of the church and set off for Rome. It is not known exactly what occurred next, but someone or something turned Donald from his religious path. He grew to hate and despise the church and their teachings. This change of heart led Donald to discover the dark arts. It is said that while in Italy, Donald joined a secret society which practiced demonology and black magic. He rose through the ranks at an astonishing rate. The other disciples of darkness had never seen someone take to sorcery with such speed or malice. So great was Mackay's power that the devil himself became his tutor. Now the young man became the right hand of Satan and took part in many of the darkest rituals and most grotesque sacrifices. Donald had become malevolent and cruel over the years. He put no value in human lives and less in those in service of the church. Some in Italy even began to fear the Scottish wizard more than the devil. Not unsurprisingly, the Lord of Darkness took great offence to this. Whether through jealousy or pride, the devil now wanted the powerful soul he had moulded. Donald was summoned to a meeting of great sorcerers. As he arrived, he could feel that not everything was as it seemed. Sitting at the head of a great table was the devil himself. He stood and beckoned Donald to him. As the Scotsman approached, the devil pounced, grasping for the soul of the young wizard. Donald had seen through the plan, however, and with incredible speed moved out of the devil's path. Quickly the Scotsman made a run for it, yelling, the devil takes the hindmost. Still clawing after the wizard, the enraged beast was able to grab his shadow. Donald escaped from harm, but ever since that day, the wizard would never cast a shadow. Shunned by the dark sorcerers of Italy, and with nowhere else to go, he headed home to Scotland to take his place as the fourth Lord of Ray. It was said then that the devil became obsessed with owning his soul, and the great beast would not rest until Donald Mackay was dead. 
Donald returned to Scotland in 1748 and became chief of the clan Mackay of Strathnaver and fourth Lord of Ray. He was a barbaric ruler and had obviously learned much from his dark master. He would kidnap or capture locals and use them to satisfy his own twisted desires. Any merchant that dared to pass within the land would be assaulted and robbed. Those that lived in the land began to fear this black-hearted human, and it was around this time that talk of the dreaded wizard of Ray began. However, Donald was well liked by the other peers of the realm and clan chiefs. Most thought there was no truth to the tales of black magic and torture. It is a common mistake to assume someone so evil and sadistic would appear as so. Donald was a good looking young Scotsman. He held himself as a respectable figure at court. On many occasions, his incredible military knowledge aided the realm, and he would inspire confidence in those around him. With this mask of personality, Donald would crush all the rumours of the horrors and Ray, and behind closed doors, revel in his hedonistic cruelty. It was a common occurrence for Donald to go hiking with his dog Familiar. The pair would travel all over the lands of Strathnaver, and on one dark night they would find themselves at the opening of a great cave. The cave was known as Smu Cave, a huge limestone cavern, commonly known as the largest coastal cave in Scotland. It was said by the frightened locals that in this cave Mackay would chain up his enemies and leave them to slowly drown as the tide came in. As Donald entered the cave, the black dog ran ahead and disappeared from sight. Suddenly the wizard heard an immense crack and a pitiful howl. The dog scampered back, yowling and weeping. All of its fur had been burned away. Instantly, Donald knew that the devil had returned for his soul. With all stealth, the wizard stole into the darkness and hid while tending to his familiar. The Lord of Ray knew that the devil would lose his power at dawn and be forced to flee or be bested, so he sat at the entrance to the cave and waited. Slowly the first light of morning began to shine on the land. Donald stood ready to face the master of evil. There was movement from deep within the cave. Coming forward into the light was Lucifer and two dark cloaked witches. You have no power now, Donald called. There was no response, but he could see in the face of the devil that he was right. Never before had Donald seen such pure and untainted anger. The beast was the very embodiment of violent hatred. As the devil's apprentice stepped forward, the beast and his retinue turned and ran deeper into the cave. Donald gave chase and soon the three were cornered. The fiery detest in the devil's eyes grew and with a roar that knocked the young wizard to the ground, the devil and the witches turned to bright balls of flaming light and burst out of the cave through the ceiling. Immediately, they returned to the darkness from which they came, and Donald had escaped the devil for a second time. Still to this day, there are three large holes in the roof of Smoo Cave, which the Smoo Barn now runs through. This conflict with the devil was said to have been viewed by a group of fake creatures that lived in the cave. They were astonished with the power of Donald. It was perhaps the only time they had ever seen such a horrific beast bested by a mortal. To show their appreciation, the she decided to serve the Dark Wizard. The fairies from the Dark Cave were good at one thing, and one thing only, building. They delighted in the creation of structures and the shaping of land. The vast majority of the large constructions and earthworks in Strathnaver are attributed to these fairies, working of course under the supervision of the Lord of Ray. However, the fairies' appetite for building work could not be satisfied. Every day they would ask Donald what to build next. Eventually the wizard could not tolerate these bothersome she anymore, but he did not know how to rid himself of this problem. Donald truly was one of the greatest practitioners of magic, yet even he knew that compared to the Doina she or fairies of old, he was outmatched. He may have learned to harness or control magic, but the fae were born of it. Donald, lost in thought, locked himself away for three days and only returned when he had concocted a devious plan. He ordered the she to build a magnificent causeway of sand from John O'Groats to Barwick across the Pentland Firth, Scotland's fiercest waterway. The current was so unyielding 
that the sand of the causeway would wash away far quicker than the sheep would replenish it. Quickly the Fae began their Sisyphean task, and Donald was forever rid of their presence. The wizard may have gotten rid of the bothersome she, but there was another entity that would not leave him so easily. One afternoon, while Donald was out hiking through the hills, it began to rain. The wizard sheltered in a small cave and waited for the shower to pass. It was in this cave the great wizard of Ray came across a curious wooden box. It was about the size of a tinder box, finely crafted and adorned in a golden floral pattern. It seemed to Donald as if it were the possession of a noble or person of royal blood. Perhaps it was hidden gold or gems from a noble house. With an intense greed overcoming the wizard, he opened the box. Suddenly, a small man, five inches in height, leapt from the box and began to grow in size. As he grew, the small man morphed into the horrifying visage of the devil. Now before Donald, filling the cave and blocking the exit, was the giant form of the morning star. Well, Mackay, roared the devil. How do you plan to escape this time? Donald, with a grotesque smile of his own, said, You have shown me my folly, Lord. Your power far exceeds mine. I mean, sure, if I wanted to, I too could grow in size. It's quite simple. We both know the real trick is shrinking oneself. That is something I, of course, could never accomplish. Donald could see the fickle beast's vanity overflowing with his praise. Once more, Donald spoke. You have me, he said. My soul is yours, but please grant me a final wish. Show me the power that I do not possess. The devil, overjoyed, was more than happy to demonstrate his power. He began to shrink in size, down and down, until the small man returned. Quickly, the cunning wizard picked up the man, threw him back in the box, slamming the lid and locking the clasp. Once again, the devil had been bested, and Donald Mackay escaped with his soul intact. The fourth Lord of Ray was said to have died at Darnes on the 18th of August, 1761. His cause of death is unknown. His body was laid to rest in the family tomb at Tong. His son George Mackay became the fifth Lord of Ray, and by all accounts was a much better master than his father. Still to this day, we will never know if the angered devil finally achieved his vengeance and took the soul of his apprentice. There are still many tales of the Wizard of Ray told up north. In Sutherland, one man told that the Wizard of Ray could bring down rain or hail with a simple wave of his hand. Other tales suggest that all of Donald Mackay's power came from a red-bound book which he discovered in his youth. Whatever the case may be, in folklore, Mackay is detested as a horrible man, full of hate, violence and bloodlust. So evil was the wizard and so corrupted was his soul that even the devil found it a prize worth having. Thank you for listening. <laughs>